This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. I believe Tyson Fury is going to beat Alexander Usyk. I believed it a year ago when I prematurely made my prediction video believing the fight would happen in April last year. And I stand by everything I said in that prediction video which is linked in the description. But without repeating everything I said then, I still believe Fury will win. And their respective most recent bouts reaffirm my belief. Not a whole lot has changed since then. Usyk went on to defend his unified heavyweight championship against Daniel Dubois, who was the WBA mandatory challenger. Incidentally, this was the first time the WBA had enforced a mandatory in nearly five years since AJ Stopovetkin. And while it's a bit of a head-scratcher that Dubois was ever a mandatory challenger to begin with, Usyk dominated the fight as expected. Usyk proved yet again that he is a sublimely skilled operator. He was easily able to outbox and outmaneuver Dubois, where he wore him down, dropping him in round 8, and finally ending matters in round 9. Despite the otherwise ease of the victory, the story of the fight happened in round 5, when Dubois landed a borderline shot that was immediately ruled a low blow by the referee. There was a lot of post-fight controversy about whether or not the shot was actually low, where if it had been ruled legal, people have speculated the possibility that Usyk may have been counted out. But the bottom line is that the referee made a judgment on the spot without the benefit of slow-mo replays from various angles, and he made his ruling without hesitation. End of. That aside, Dubois did not offer much serious resistance and he was thoroughly outclassed by a superior technician. Meanwhile, Fury had just the one fight and it was perceived as a gimmick match against former UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou. The entire event was highly criticized in boxing circles, and the expectation from most going in was that Fury would not have much difficulty beating someone who had never previously competed as a professional boxer. The reality, however, was that Ngannou boxed far better than most were expecting, and Fury did not look particularly good. Ngannou was selective with his output, while exhibiting good balance, he had solid timing, and perhaps most amazingly, he paced himself accordingly and displayed a great deal of stamina and granite durability. At the end of the day, Fury escaped with a razor-thin split-decision victory against a 37-year-old man making his professional boxing debut. The story of this fight was the fact that a guy making his debut dropped the lineal world heavyweight champion in round three. Beyond that, there were a lot of people who believed that Ngannou had done enough to earn a victory. This was the culmination of Fury's reputation heading south where having a third fight with Chisora was frowned upon, and then the perception emerged that Fury was being greedy and that he was to blame for the Usyk fight falling apart last April. But the perception goes beyond that, where even with the Boxing Day of Reckoning, AJ made easy work of Otto Valin, a former Fury opponent who gave Fury a tough fight several years back. And then Joseph Parker, a man who was decisively beaten by AJ, while Parker went on to dominate Deontay Wilder, a former three-time Fury opponent who dropped Fury four times across their trilogy. But those overlapping triangle theories tell us nothing about the way the styles of Fury and Usyk will clash. Their most recent fights tell us far more about that than any bouts between any common opponents. Usyk displayed his great abundance of skills and talent when he beat Dubois. And the key takeaway from that fight is that Usyk is a rhythm fighter. This has always been the case. Once Usyk establishes his rhythm, and he is moving and grooving in a zone, it is very difficult to deal with him. It helps that Usyk has an incredible ring IQ, superb athleticism, and great toughness with an unwavering will to win. And while the low blow maybe shouldn't factor into evaluating Usyk, he is someone who has always been seen as being less durable to the body than he is to the head. And the reality is, with a different referee, that shot may not have been ruled low in the heat of the moment. Against Ngannou, Fury again proved that he has evolved into a fighter who has a greater reliance on physicality than he did previously. Since transitioning to the Kronk style under Sugar Hill, Fury is more apt to impose his size and weight on an opponent, where he can physically wear them down with his massive size. 
Fury can still do a lot of tricky things from the outside and mid-range, and he still has that herky-jerky, itchy-twitchy, elusive style. But physicality is a big part of his game. With Nganu, Fury was being uncharacteristically overpowered and outmuscled in the clinch, and Nganu had enough pop that relying on his physicality actually worked against him. Against Usyk, I do not believe Fury will struggle in that department. So as I see it, the key for each fighter is fairly simple in principle. For Usyk, he is going to want to neutralize Fury's size and physicality, which is a mighty tall order. For Fury, he is going to need to disrupt Usyk's rhythm early and often, and ideally to the point that Usyk never establishes any real rhythm to begin with. This is no easy feat either. But at the end of the day, I believe that neutralizing Fury's size and physicality will be more difficult for Usyk than disrupting Usyk's rhythm will be for Fury. And indeed, I believe these two factors overlap. The fact that neutralizing Fury's size and physicality will inherently offset his rhythm. I think this all works against Usyk. And when you consider Fury will likely be hammering away at the torso and abdomen of Usyk whenever the two are mid-range or in tight, I think Fury will be able to disrupt Usyk's rhythm more often than not. And I believe Fury's massive weight will weaken his legs by the later parts of the fight. I do believe Usyk will have a slight advantage whenever he is comfortably at mid-range, but with Fury's size, that in itself will become tricky even if Usyk has the far better legs and footwork. Fury ain't too shabby at long range, or mid range, and he has an uncanny ability to quickly close the gap like a charging hippo to make things more physical. And finally, I cannot shake the words of the late great Hall of Fame trainer Emmanuel Stewart, where even after the two no longer work together, Emmanuel told me that the thing that makes Fury special is his unbelievable determination, and with his reputation now at an all-time low, I believe Fury will be as determined as he can be at this point in time. I stand by my official prediction from almost a year ago. I like Tyson Fury by 11th round stoppage. I just think the size will prove to be a big deciding factor, and Fury knows how to utilize every advantage he has, where he has a lot of tools in that toolbox. But then again, what the hell do I know? I ain't exactly Quasimodo over here. I'm just happy the fight looks like it's going to happen, and if I'm wrong for picking Fury, I will gladly return the following week to remind everyone that I don't know shit about boxing. Best of luck to both Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. I, for one, am hoping we finally get an undisputed world heavyweight champion for the first time in 24 damn years since the great Lennox Lewis last held that distinction. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this.